All right, fellas, this is really important. Get your testosterone levels checked. It's very important for the last five decades or so, we've been observing, this is well known, observing testosterone levels declining on a consistent rate. We're also looking at fertility has declined. In fact, the man today has half the sperm that his grandfather had. So things are getting weird. Get your testosterone levels checked. See where they're at. Testosterone, of course, is a hormone that helps with drive, confidence, muscle mass, fat loss, cognitive performance and function. Low testosterone, very unhealthy. Get it tested. At the very least, find a baseline that you're at so you can test it later on and compare it. But many of you may have low testosterone and don't realize it. This reminds me, actually, I wanted to ask Doug this. Would you look up the the growth of hormone clinics over the last five years? I know on the show, predicted a while back that, um, you know, it reminded me of the green rush when uh, marijuana clubs hit the market. Yeah. And we saw that, like, just explode. It felt very similar to the same thing. Um, and I want to see how many clinics are now out there when we first uh first started because it's it seems like this is and i, I feel like this is why we're going to see it explode yeah is yeah. because mo this is becoming more it's a real more, issue now yeah it's becoming more and more it's not common knowledge yet but it's getting there where well what's crazy is that this has been observed for like five decades that we've seen testosterone levels consistently decline um you know every year uh and now there's lots of speculation as to why uh yeah. You know, some people say it's lifestyle. We're moving less. You can't really we're reduce it down to sun. a few things. It's all, all is a multitude of yeah, factors. Chemicals, right? There's yeah. certain chemicals that uh, are estrogenic or uh, have effects in the body. Okay, if we estrogen. had, okay, if the three of us had to check like the top five, how would you order them? Oh, how would I? I would 100% order um, uh, chemicals as number one. Whoa, really? I would over really? like a sleep. I would. Yeah. I would. I'll put that number one. I, I wouldn't have done this before, but the more and more I learn about um, these chemicals and the the how they're, they're powerful, combined. yeah. Oh my god, there's one in particular. I can't remember the name of. It. I got to find it. There's one in particular that was banned in Europe and uh, not banned here, and it's still being used. And it's been shown. I'm going to pull it up right. Interesting. Now. See, I would I would lay I would put uh, uh, atrazine. Have you guys heard oh, of atrazine? I have heard no. of atrazine. It yes. wreaks havoc with the sex lives of adult male frogs, emasculating three quarters of them and turning one out of ten into females. By the way, this was uh, what's his name? Oh. Alex, Alex Jones. Alex Jones he's, talked about. He's this. always the uh, the alarmist, like yeah. super like crazy version of like what you know, may potentially be some truth. So yeah, I, so that was in water, like in some of the drinking water is yes. that where they found it. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's a herbicide and it's our food and water supply. Um, and, uh, the, the European union banned it, but it's not banned. That's one, by the way, there's so many different chemicals that, uh, can affect your hormone system. Wow. You tell you go one. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, because we're exposed at like ridiculous levels now. I mean, I don't. I mean, I I don't have an argument really. I just, I just, I my theory is, I think uh, diet and lack of movement has to be up there. Definitely, and, I would go. I would and, say and, and, I, that's up in the top three. Yeah, sure. right. I would. I would say that for sure, because you see this across the board. You see this with athletes too. Hmm. They test testosterone levels with athletes. Those are going down too. Now they still have good testosterone. But it's been affected. So and they've then, actually they've actually s separated athletic men and compared them. There's not great studies, but there are some studies that show. Oh, that. see, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then fertility. Wow. So here's the other one. It's not just uh, testosterone; it's also fertility. I, like I said, our our we are producing half the sperm that a generation or two. Wouldn't was those be before. correlated though? Like if you go down wow. and sort of your fertility is also going to go dramatically you down. Mean if you go down testosterone, yeah, it's yeah. So, um, I mean, maybe, yeah, they could be connected for yeah. sure. Um, uh, but, but I don't know if you would produce necessarily less sperm because you're not as active. Maybe your sperm wouldn't be as healthy. Maybe not. It, it, maybe it's not a, 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 um, you know, causation, but I would say there's a pretty direct, I mean, there's, some connection. there's a direct correlation yeah. to that. So that's kind of like a, like, but like fertility, this is like a big deal. Um, hmm. you know, if we, if we really, if we mess with our, at this rate, I don't remember what the statistics show, but at this rate, I think within a couple of generations, like we're not gonna be able to make kids anymore. Um, so it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's so wild. Yeah. And, and the reason why I'm saying this is, that is, you know, go get your testosterone levels checked and there's a range that you're going to get what's considered, um, you know, common. That's not necessarily what's healthy. The common range is like this really low to really high. 
you want to be towards the upper range of that, especially if you're in your twenties. Yeah. Um, and, um, and you know, optimizing that makes a big difference in your behaviors and how you feel. What does that say right there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it can directly affect. So uh, yeah, they are correct. They are connected, but I don't know, man, it's, it's wild when you look at the data and how long we've known that this has been happening and how nobody's really been. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you just shocked me. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed you to say that chemicals is number one. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty wild to me. Yes. It's, it's, and, and I know like where the backlash on that would be is like the, the, the studies on like all these chemicals individually by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it's what you're not accounting for, which there is no studies for is something that takes into account all of these different chemicals that we are constantly either breathing in, touching, sleeping in, rubbing in our skin and what that does potentially, right? It's like yeah. they wouldn't get past FDA, wouldn't be approved for usage if that that it as by itself at high levels wasn't safe and okay to use. But what no one is doing is saying like, oh yeah, well, what do you put in your hair? What do you put on your right. skin? What do you sleep on your bed? What are, what's on and your? If clothes? you're already unhealthy, how much of a more there, massive yeah. impact that makes? Sure, on you that's another your good immune point. system's a bit more compromised, and so having like all these other external factors come in and um you know go through the population well, with uh, the well being you know, the virus fit and healthy else. being fit and healthy allows your body to detox uh, these chemicals faster and easier too so you're likely to build up some of these loads but i mean for sure the fact that people are less active getting less sun probably worse sleep uh in their diet is worse is definitely up there so i mean I, you know if when, I know, if i saw a study that said that that was more more of an impact in chemical. Would I would it would it shock me? No, mm -hmm. um, but I definitely think that. Yeah, I just I I think that we would all agree on that for sure. I mean, that one for me is like a no brainer, and but that's also person because of my personal experience. Like, I I I I have felt that like dramatic difference because of I I went through somebody who's synthetically taken uh you know lots of hormones and then not taking them and then gone through the natural dip afterwards. And then felt what that felt like, and then also felt what it felt like to dial the diet in and strength train, and like what a dramatic. And I also tried all the different supplementation, mm -hmm. and I've tried to you know limit all the chemicals. I've I've done a lot of that stuff to try and you know do my best of naturally increasing it. And to me, the, the nothing felt more than eating eating healthy, high protein, good amount of healthy fats, good calories, and strength training at least like that. Weights, yeah. yeah, that. I like felt that. Well, strength know? training um, helps with testosterone in two ways. It raises testosterone consistently if done right. Uh, of all forms of exercise, it does it the best. And then it also does this kind of double whammy where it upregulates androgen receptors. That's the that's where the testosterone attaches to. So you get a rise in testosterone plus the testosterone that you do have becomes more potent in your body because of increased androgen receptor receptors because of more muscle mass. So it's the single most impactful thing you can do aside with sleep and diet. Now the chemical stuff, you know, the reason why that's a hard one to focus on is because like, where do I start? What's the biggest offender? Ah, right. Like, you know, what do yeah. I do? Um, but lifting weights, you know, eating good, getting good sleep, those alone can have hugely protective well, uh, benefits. Well, strength, strength, diet, strength, diet, and sleep are the only three two that you could literally measure instantly, right? Yeah. See the difference? Like you, yeah. you get poor. Like measure someone's testosterone after a good night's sleep, right? It's same time, right? Eight in the morning, they wake up. What their testosterone levels are now? Intentionally have terrible sleep the next yeah, day. Measure it, and you'll see a drop. Yeah. Do the same thing with, uh, you know, starve your body of nutrients for a day, test it, see what happens, feed it appropriately, test it, see what happens. Same thing goes with strength training, no strength training whatsoever. Yeah. Do it, test it and see what happens. Yeah. And there's this, that's why, that's why those make the top three for me because they're that dramatic that like you could literally remove them or manipulate them in a single day and see a, a fluctuation on that. Yeah. Right? Well, with food, it would take a little longer, but, uh, but you, the point you're making is, is true. Like if you, if you work out and you eat right and you sleep right, let's say you test your testosterone levels today. And then for 60 days, you get really good sleep in comparison to what you were getting before your diet's a lot better in comparison and you're lifting weights appropriately. I say appropriately because you could overdo it, right? Uh, or do it wrong. But you're lifting weights appropriately so you're stronger at the end of 60 days uh, significantly. Then go get your testosterone levels checked. And it's almost guaranteed you'll see an improvement. Yeah. It's almost guaranteed you'll see 
better total levels, better free testosterone. And then you can't measure this necessarily, uh, but you, you should have uh, increased density of androgen receptors. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Split. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale on some programs right now. Our beginner strength training program, MAPS Starter, is 50% off. And then we have a bundle that includes MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. By the way, did you guys, there's a study that's being circulating right now. This is how crazy, so it's so weird. When we started the podcast, um, we identified the fitness industry at large, the, 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 the marketing behind it, the supplement selling, make everybody feel bad about themselves, buy our shit. You know, here's terrible information side of the fitness industry as the enemy that we were trying to really right. counter and fix because they weren't helping anybody. But what's becoming more and more evident is uh, there's another enemy that's coming out uh, against people's health. And this one's a little bit more- Way more nefarious. Scary and nefarious and cunning. Um, and they play a long game and they're- it's, and it, so, it, it's repeating itself. It's weird. So I'll read you this, the title of the study that is making its, its, uh, its rounds right now. And um, first off, the title itself- they're already using, uh, they're already politicizing the study to try to make it sound a particular way. But I'll read the title here. Um, and this is what's been flying everywhere. Uh, Testosterone administration induces a red shift in Democrats. That's the stu that's what that's what they're saying. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so let me break it down for you because this is not the first study to show that. There's actually multiple studies that show. Not what that title said. I want everybody just free, just relax for a second because that's a politicized title. They're really smart with how they they twist shit. Um, but what the study found has been found in, in previous studies. So here's what they found. First off, in the study itself, hardcore Democrats, hardcore Republicans give them testosterone. They don't change their views. Okay, people who are in the middle who kind of lean a little bit and will label it as left. Uh, tend to go more towards the right when they're given testosterone. Now, what people need to understand is it's not necessarily, um, I was a Democrat, now I'm a Republican. That's how they're labeling it. What it is, is when they give men who like more uh, regulations, more help, government safety nets, yeah. um, you know, less kind of free market type stuff, that kind of stuff, more like quote unquote, you know, safety from Big Brother. Yeah. When they're they move towards that with low testosterone, you give them testosterone, then they move towards more. Well, uh, we should be more free. Um, we should let free markets kind of thrive a little bit more. Uh, I don't think you should be monitoring us that much uh, for our quote unquote safety. We should be able to protect ourselves. That kind of stuff. Now they've labeled it left and right, and I guess you could loosely do that. But really what it is, in a nutshell, is that testosterone is a feel-good, confident- Empowering. Hormone. Yeah. Empowering kind of hormone. Anybody mm -hmm. who's ever been low testosterone versus high testosterone can tell you um, that that's the case. So people who ha who go from low to high testosterone become le more likely to want less control and smaller government. Yeah. Or, if you look a little deeper- are less harder to manipulate. Which the state does not like. Right. Mm, right. So they paint like it as like, it's a red shift and testosterone does this or whatever. Like that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to vote re Republican. You could also vote Libertarian or vote for more, I guess, small government Democrats who, if, if any of them yeah. exist these days. It's but just people advocating for their own health. Yes. Less manipulatable. That uh, also kind of strengthens uh, what I've been talking about. And people have called me some you know conspiracy. I've gotten so much negative stuff in the past, but now people are starting to come around where I've said, man, I'm starting to see more and more articles demonizing 
fitness. You know what? And I and I thought that movement kind of was going to die off. Like to be very honest, like I thought that was just at the time was somewhat relevant to kind of like throw shade at some. I guess I, I don't know, like the the big conservative movement or whatever, and like. Uh, people advocating for opening up, you know, a lot of the lockdowns and all mm -hmm. that kind of situation. Like, I thought it was like relevant then, but to see it now um, pop up again and um, to put that out there, it's like to us, it just sounds absurd. Right. And to a lot of people listen, it sounds absurd. This is just absurd. And just, you're just going to dismiss it. Mm -hmm. You're going to see this come up again. And then you're going to see it come up again later. And it's like this constant, like gaslighting inundate like they're just gonna inundate you with this idea yeah you have to look at because the best marketers the most um i guess uh the the smartest most cunning manipulative marketers in the world uh work for politics they spend billions of dollars they've been studying it for decades for a long time they're really good at getting people to kind of uh, to change their behaviors or to be scared or angry or hate people. And they're really good at that, right? especially the negative emotions. So we got to piece it all together, right? So we're get, getting articles that say things like um, lifting weights makes men more aggressive. M uh, muscle is toxic masculinity. Gyms are these unaccepting places. They're fat phobic. This mm -hmm. one said the far right's obsession with fitness was this other article. Now that's making it. <laughs> then you combine that with uh, fat is beautiful, health at any size, um, you know, kind of like promoting unhealthy body image in the right. opposite extreme uh, with obesity and stuff like that. And if you piece all that together, what you start to see is they just want us to be very weak, healthy. Weak, unhealthy, obedient uh, conformists. Yes. They want, they don't want us to be very healthy because they can't sell us as much stuff. They can't scare us as much. They we're not going to make, buy as many pharmaceuticals. Um, and especially men, because men, you know, if you if you really weaken uh, man, boys, it's easy to take over a whole movement sure. or whatever. Yeah. So that's kind of that's it's, that's it's pretty alarming. Everybody's like, honest. oh, this is a conspiracy. No, man, look at like like it's starting to happen. It's really starting to get big. And they, like this study again, it's so funny the way that they worded it. It's like this red shift. Like they're already trying to make people demonize testosterone. You know what I mean? The part that I always have a hard time with this is like, who is they? Who's they? You speak of. There's, uh, there's obviously people putting it out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now so you have to, you are have they all, to reduce are they all meeting together? Well, you know, they we all don't call talk each other and text each other. They're on a group thread. Like who? Are, I think. Who's I they? think anybody who who falls under that intelligence ideology. agencies. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to go that far, that's well, that's <laughs> yeah. what you're alluding to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's. I mean, who is they? Like, who is they? And are they all aligned with the way they're colluding, or is it just? I think look how everybody was in collusion with like all the different companies and media companies. And they're all saying the same exact message yeah. through the entire love, COVID process. Yeah. It's very plausible that they have an initiative to, you know, control the population and get us to do what they want. Well, look, here's a, here's the thing too. Whenever, uh, um, especially when there's elections coming up, you, you see the fear mongering scale the fuck up. Why? Because it's very easy to get people to vote a particular way if you scare them. And it's easier to get them to hate someone than it is to get them to love someone. So it just, it just, yeah, I get gross. that. I get that because then, I mean, uh, anytime there is uh, a lot of money or power at stake, this is when the, the, the most effort is going to be put forth. Right. And so when it comes to, you know, r running for the president, like uh -huh. there's nothing more powerful and potentially impacting money wise. And so there's going to be a ton of effort and money put behind swaying people one way or another, you know, but uh, when we say things like they, I'm always just like, you know, who, like, who is like, who is getting together and all organizing it like this to collude and actually, you know, control that big of a narrative. And is it like a handful of people? Is it like hundreds of people that are all, on well, is it working? I mean, what's, what's defined working? Uh, you know? Shaping the culture and, and, and changing the way that we uh, word things and accept certain concepts and, um, you know, all of it is like a very systematic way of like receiving information. It's, I mean, is that fear and thought process any different than our dad's dad? Well, I'll tell you I what. I don't think so, but it's. I mean, look, I'll tell you what. There's articles now that I, you wouldn't, you couldn't even imagine 10 years ago getting published. You couldn't imagine. Could you imagine an article? I know. That, that right back demonizing to fitness 15 mm -hmm. years ago. Everybody like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Why would you, what are you talking about? Demonizing fitness. Like it's, 
It's great. It's like fitness is good for yeah, you. Yeah, well, that's why it's absurd. It doesn't make sense unless it's like part of some reason, right? Well, it's I mean, some, but back to my reason. point with your dad's dad. I mean, your dad's dad would say that about commercials, television, uh, articles, clothing that kids can wear, the stuff they can watch and sure. see, like mm -hmm. music they can sure. listen to. Uh, that if you if you went back in time just 60 years yeah project uh, some of the things that we we think is totally normal i think would uh, you're you would, they would be freaking out well, look, that too so, one of the most well-known uh th th you know when this happened one of the most well-known occurrences like this was uh when big tobacco uh colluded with regular regulators and government mm -hmm. to lie about the connection between cancer and uh, tobacco. That was that's all well documented. That's yeah, like and legit. that's that's a very exa good example of who they is. Like they're like they is to the the company tobacco that you know they're in the it's they're looking out for their best interest to make the most amount of money, mm -hmm. and so they put out all this narrative that is like so. That's why when I say they, who is they in this situation? Because that's very clear to me. That's yeah. very clear. That and why they would do that? Yeah. They're motivated into profiting. Yeah, hard, I think it's hard to define because they're so it's so elusive, right? It's yeah. like you can go down a rabbit hole, and then there's disinformation, and misinformation that uh, you know purposely kind of leads you in, in crazy directions. But there's also a lot of truth uh, in when you look back and look at a lot of lies, and you look at a lot of manipulation and fraud, and deliberate things that uh, were passed uh, based off of you know, some of these these things that they're trying to sway people's opinion. Yeah, by the way, what you're doing right now, Adam, whether you realize it or not, is how people try to argue down uh, any concern. Oh, yeah? Well, who's the boogeyman? Yeah. Name him. What does he look like? I'll tell you who they is. It's the ideology. I don't give a fuck who's behind it. They, when I say they, it's this insane ideology that is starting to get promoted, that is telling people that it's good to be unhealthy, that it's bad to have testosterone, that it's bad to lift weights, it's toxic, that it's good to stay at home, that it's good to just jerk off to porn, not meet with people, that, that that's all good and all the other stuff is bad. And it's not that bad for you. Don't worry about it. Let your kids be on there all day long. It's not a big, like that's they. Yeah. I don't, whoever it is, I don't care. It's the ideology that I want to counter. And well, do you think that? I, some, and when it comes to health and fitness, that's, that's my space. That's that's that's. Do you think that's? Do you think though that maybe it is an example like the tobacco one, where it's actually a, a collection of all these different you know, companies and politicians and people, but uh, we're grouping them all in together as they, and they're really not all colluding together. It's like this group it cares about the messaging around health and fitness because it's what serves them and their agenda. Yeah. This group over here is is putting out this message because it serves them for this, and then a lot a lot that collectively doesn't align with your ideology and value, and so then you lump them as they as if they're on the same team when in reality it's a bunch of individuals that are trying to mm. profit or yeah i don't know if it's a gain it's power it's interesting because if you could yeah I, mean, I see where you're going with that but like it too like what's the article about it's about like democrats like turning into republicans all of a sudden by going to the gym yeah, like, yeah, if i'm going to sum it up right like so <laughs> so now it's like oh well then what is it the democratic party like putting out this information to try and salvage like yeah. you know cause hysteria towards anybody that's going into the gym it's just i have weird. no idea why that would be the case it's just really it's it's uh I don't know. It's really weird to see and to read. Look, um, think about the market right now, all the markets, like all the stuff out there, products. Think of all the products that you can buy that uh, are very profitable. Now think of uh, a healthy consumer and all, you know, in, in every sense of the word, healthy, physically, mentally stable versus an unhealthy consumer. Okay. Which one is more valuable to most of the markets that are out there. Walk through the grocery store. How many foods uh, attra are attractive or are going to be purchased by healthy consumers versus unhealthy consumers? Pharmaceutical drugs. How many drugs are taken by healthy consumers versus unhealthy consumers? Habits. How many habits are 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 taken up and spent money on and mon money spent on by unhealthy versus healthy, and so on. So it's just. Maybe they're. I mean, I'm not saying that there's one like, you well, know, so like what, Lizard King. That's what. One of the one of the, <laughs> of the reasons why I have that, a really but. hard time, like even like, like getting bought into any any idea like this, like of of they or, is that the where we get this information? The article you're reading right now is through uh, news news outlets and social media platforms, and they are not incentivized to tell the truth on either side. 
they're incentivized to get eyeballs and clicks. Right. And anytime that you incentivize a bit, and if you don't, you die. Like if you do not get more clicks and views than a, a company who is all out to sit, tell the truth, the one that's all out to tell the truth will not yeah. get advertisers, will not get views, will not get clicks, and will eventually dissolve. Unless you find somebody who is just out there that wants to pump billions of dollars okay. into- Pharmaceutical companies. Right. right. So you're going to have these people that are, are driving- or, or that are driving clicks. And, and so they're incentivized to do that. So it's in their best interest to put news out, whether it's on the left or the right, to be alarming and to get us to discuss, debate, talk, share, and and do stuff about. So they're incentivized to, to kind of lie about things or exaggerate things because that's what gets people talking about it. If the, if the truth is kind of like, now, okay, so lame he, and and boring and not as 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 radical and scary and crazy and conspiracy like, then they're not going to say it or share it because know, look, it's not good enough. Here's the deal: there's definitely some truth in that, but and I used to think that was all it was until I started seeing more companies seemingly purposely tank themselves, tank themselves. I'm like, why are you doing this? You saw what happened to this company; yeah. they got destroyed. Now you're getting crushed, and then you see another company do it. You're getting crushed. Wait a minute, don't you guys know that consumers aren't buying into this? And then you learn about things like ESG and these boards that operate and influence from the top down. Not the consumer driving, but rather right. them influencing through regulation uh, investors saying you must have products like this. You must represent this. Otherwise, you're not getting – this is all real, by the way. You can look mm -hmm. this up. Otherwise, you're not getting funding. And so that's why right now you look at companies like – how, why would they do that? Don't they know they're going to get destroyed? Here's why they're doing it, because they're told to do it from a top-down type of model. So I, I wish it was pure market-based because it would be a little bit better. It wouldn't be, I think, like I said, it seems to be accelerating. Yeah. I and the fact that they're coming after fitness is insane to me. It's absolutely insane to me because it's it's... There's nothing that it does that's bad. You could, of course, uh, approach it in I mean, a bad you way. Can and you can connect dots, dude. Yeah. It's, it is a, it's a tough line to toe without sounding like you're just a pissed off lunatic, you know. Uh, but to the stats we were talking about earlier about like how much the influence of the pharmaceutical companies have on all the marketing share of every media outlet here is alarming as hell. Yeah. And people should really look into that and then decide for themselves how much of that information is really authentically coming from, you know. To me, that's way more cut and clear. Right. I mean, that's just like, that's again, very, yeah. it's very, that's very but obvious. You can tie that into what we're talking about is my yeah. point. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that, that goes back to my point of like, you know, are we lumping these, all these separate things into one when they're this one, like it might be isolated, right? It might like, be like pharmaceutical companies are obviously like incentivized yeah. to control the narrative on pro their drug and avoid conversation around things that are anti theirs, right? That's right. obvious. And so they're going to control that and they're going to do everything in their power to do that through money with these networks. That's obvious to me. But then you go over to the fitness one and stuff like that. Like, I don't know if that's the same people that are colluding. I think that, I think both those things tend to not align with your ideology. Oh, or how, so you're and, arguing that you don't think that there's I think like a, a this, they. this like, I think, I think there's probably to what you're bringing up, there is probably a very, specific or isolated situation that is that or reason behind what that is and i and, and i'm also saying that it could be as simple as like we know that this is controversial mm -hmm. and that this will get a bunch of debates and talks and arguments and fighting amongst people because the, there is going to be a right-wing person that is going to defend this there's going to be a left-wing person to go the other way and so we're just going to put that bullshit out there even though it doesn't have a lot of legs to it but we know that it's going to get talked about Hmm. I don't know. It, it is interesting because, I, like I said, you're, you're, I keep I seeing these layers to this whole thing. I know, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. and I think that's where people will get tripped up. And I think yeah. well, I mean, that's, that's you're right on the layer, but and then, then it I does, think there's higher layers. And then than doesn't that. it also? Influence. I mean, here, here, I'm going to dip into your guys' little conspiracy thing because here's where the the conspiracy side of me comes out. Is like all of it is just put out there because it, what's really going behind the scenes has nothing to do with anything you think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like this is all to get you all distracted, just like the Colosseum was, oh, yeah. you know, back. In the days is just like pay attention to all this fighting right left i think is all just yeah pay ruse. attention to all this crazy yeah. drama and argue over I've, these articles never, or that yeah. meanwhile we're doing some backdoor shit on you that you're not even you have, it has not connected to none of that bullshit because that's because you're not looking in that direction at the end of the day though i will say this uh whatever is going on a, a person is 
in the best position to not be manipulated or taken advantage of or go down the wrong path, uh, if, if you will, if they're the fit, healthy version of themselves. In other words, regardless of whoever is messing with you, you're less likely to be messed with if you're truly healthy, if you're really healthy. And I mean that on, the, on every sense, not just physical, but mental, spiritual, solid, you feel good. Um, you're just harder to mess with. You're, you're harder to mess with. Not saying it's, you're impervious. It's just you feel confident. You feel strong. You're less likely to be afraid. You're, you're be less likely equipped. Yeah. You have more. You have more positive filter uh, through which you view things. Um, you're more likely to be kind. This is all proven, by the way. Like you're less irritable. Like it's so funny to me how how they'll paint like people who work out as being aggressive or whatever. That's not so opposite. Uh, yeah. Being unhealthy. Uh, having low testosterone, uh, all that stuff, more inflamed, makes you irritable, makes you feel like shit. When you're fit and healthy, you feel good. Mm -hmm. You're less likely to be aggressive, <clears throat> not more likely. Yeah. You know? I mean, I feel like a lot you, of You these... might look scarier, <laughs> but you're not scarier. I feel like a lot of them say something that I'm, it's probably going to cause even more people to not like me today. Um, <laughs> what you say today? Like, yeah. oh, you've already done that so much yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. So I'm already, today? I know I'm winning people over right now. Uh, <laughs> so may as well go all in. Um, I, I think personally that almost all of this can go back to the the movement in our culture to remove God from everything. Oh well, because a lot of, to me that's where all of this stems from. It stems from this like trying to go the opposite direction so hard without foreseeing where that leads. Mm. And it, and in in theory, you know, say whatever how many years ago or how many decades ago that began happening, where we started to move in that direction you didn't foresee like the slippery slope that that led to. And now you're committed and you're all into that of rejecting God so hard that you didn't see where that was going to end. You know, it's to me, that is less conspiratorial and more easily could have happened. You, you know, what's interesting about what you're saying, forget the metaphysical, you know, the, the, the whole, like that, that side of it, just look at the, uh, the psychology. Yeah. Look at psychology. Look the, at history. The structure and the discipline. Look at well, yeah. and not just that. Look at um, how we evolved, how cultures developed. It's pretty clear that people need a unifying belief system uh, in order to continue to work together and yeah. move in the right direction. That's so right. that's more, it's just more efficient. It's, and just, it's clear. So and along yeah. those lines, think we we had found one that has had had kept us moving in this 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 collective direction for you know hundreds of years thousands and just recently okay we have decided that we are going to dismantle it and and that has been growing in that direction and i think what we see unfolding is all the repercussions from that and then it, and it's easy to think that there's this they group that is controlling a move or it's just that like a bunch of idiots we've sold this idea so hard that this God thing is this made up the sky thing and that's so bad for us. And so we're going the opposite direction. And what we are happening to see in our lifetime is what the unfolding of that looks like yeah. and why we probably for thousands of years stayed in that. You know direction. what I like to tell yeah. people who are like, uh, who are like atheists or whatever is cause I was there too, is look at the commonalities between the most widely practiced uh, religions and what you'll find is spiritual truth. So, because they get caught up in the, well, how do you know your religion is the right one? How do you know this is the right one? Like, forget that for a second. Look at the commonalities. And what you'll find there is wisdom uh, in, in human behavior. That's what you'll find. You'll find that the reason why these people did this, that people did this, this people did that, and why they all believed in this particular way is because it works. There's some spiritual truth. And what I find very interesting is like, you know, religions will talk about sin or, you know, what you do that's wrong or whatever. What's interesting, that all goes down to that uh, people, whether we are aware of it or not, because we act willingly, like we have choice, at least we believe we have choice, but whatever you want to argue, uh, at the end of the day, we end up following something that we worship, whether we, we, know, we know or not. It's like, at the end of the day, I am choosing something because I like it better than something else. And when you take that out, then, then again, human behavior shows that you take God out, you end up following like earthly things that we know are not good, like money, pleasure, power, like all these things that we know, we all know, like even atheists will tell you, oh yeah, if you, you worship money, power, pleasure, honor, it's like, those are all, they turn people into evil people. Yep. So, I mean, you could be right. Well, know? and I also think to close the loop on the whole, they argument that I'm trying to make is that 
it's also in our nature to want to blame it on a thing or find a a culprit, right? I mean, that's like, I mean, they've known that forever. Mm. It's like how, how we get convinced us to go to war and stuff like that is we find an enemy and it's, yeah. he's, Osama bin Laden is the one who's responsible yeah, yeah. for all this or so-and-so is this or the left is this or the yeah. right is that. It's like we, it's in our human nature to want to do that when I, I don't, I don't think it's this isolated person oh, or maybe group. Maybe in the mirror. I think it's, yeah, it is more yeah. in the, I think it's more us as a society and that this is what happens when you p remove something that is so important to a culture and I think it's unfolding right before our eyes. And what do we what do we do? We want to point the finger at each other. Mm. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's their fault. It's the mm. left's fault. It's the right's fault. Yeah. And in reality, it's like, no, this is what happens when you remove that and it's playing out real time for us. Yeah, give me more distractions. Give me more drugs. Make mm -hmm. There's definitely better. bad actors, though, still. Say what? Well, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. no, I, that I'm not arguing. I'm saying, there's, yeah, no, I, I totally, I, I see yeah. your train of thought and I totally, yeah, yeah. follow that. For yeah. Sure. And I, and I, and in that, terms of like the uh, dismantling and the fracturing, the chaos that ensues when well, you don't have a common. Well, here, you, you open a can of worms, fine, we'll go down that. So, <laughs> okay. So, do you think that in that case, un, under, in, in that context, that there's spiritual warfare going on then? Yeah, of course. That I do. they is the, 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 the bad. Spiritual side, that's... I mean, that's, I do, because that's yeah. my belief. You could look at it, too, as, like, the dark side of human behavior versus, like, you know, right. following, you know, more of a positive, like... Uh, but that's a less esoteric way to look at it. It's a less esoteric yeah. way yeah. to look at it. So yeah. you get... People are driven by maybe nefarious means because it, it, it brought them... Uh, what they were looking for, which was power, which was money, which right. was influence, which was these things that got them to this place in powerful position. And so now they're just implementing the same tactics, but they're the ones now that have the seat. You know what sucks about totally. all this? What sucks is that the people that we tend to elect or put in charge, the type of people that desire that position so badly. Are the wrong will spend ones. All, exactly the There's people you don't want to There's a quote or a saying for that, yeah. right? The best leaders are the ones that don't want to be. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, those are, the, those are, and it's like, <laughs> it's those, so those people yeah. have been eyeballing that position since they were probably These are the ones damn we want child. to push forward and they're like, ah, no. Yeah, I know. I, I know, yeah, I wish, they know I, wish what it I, I wish we had a different way of the way we elected people to run cities, run our, run our, be our leaders, right? It's just, uh, the way we do it is not the right way. We did it in this gamesmanship way and, you know, it's turned into a way of manipulating and stepping on people to get to that. Dude, they're going to spend like uh, like $4 billion for this presidential election. $4 billion. Why so much money? Because there's a lot of influence and a lot of shit yeah. happening there. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so mon much money in it. Oh, yeah. Nope, there wouldn't be the irony, all generating so much money. The irony of that when we're, we're in this trillion dollar debt, right? <laughs> yeah. We spend billions of dollars. It's so fucked <laughs> just, just, we just spend less? Over yeah. what <laughs> asshole should be elected when none of these assholes Can we take away elected? all corporate influence? <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. And then the best time- We actually, you know what? We bet we probably would find a better leader for this country by blindly fucking throwing a rock into a crowd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, this guy looks president. like a good guy. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, a good Pick lady. that guy. He doesn't yeah. want to be it. Bob? Yeah, Bob. You're the president. I don't know anything really? don't worry you'll figure it out either the last guy yeah. no my favorite is at the end of it like a good guy bob at the this has this by the way this happens every single time at the end of it you have two candidates and everybody's like that's the two people this? that we have to pick from how did this happen yeah every time what was it south park did an episode i think it was a. oh yeah it's it was a, a turd, turd sandwich versus like and a, a douchebag douchebag yeah. those are the two choices they had to <laughs> vote for for the school that still holds true welcome to the cable access televised debate between a giant douche and a turd sandwich yes i gotta I watch mean, south park uh, more good, they're so good they are they're so good they really are i would i tell you what you know people ask us all the time like i and i never think of them as a name but uh, of like, oh, who would you love to interview? Like that. I would, oh yeah. yeah, Trey Parker. Do you know or, that they went yeah. to? You yeah, you know this. I mean, you oh. and I talked about this. Finally, they bring up well uh, uh, something I had up here to talk about. Oh, good. So yeah. they went. Did you guys know they went to? I think it was Academy Award show. Yeah, dressed in J Lo's uh, uh, dress. Yeah, like the, the, the distinctive green one that was like got her all this. Yeah, the famous attention the famous dress. And yeah. they were tripping on acid. Yeah, and the other one was like Gwen Gwyneth Paltrow or something. Yeah, they're. <laughs> I love those guys. They're so hilarious. So, could dude. you imagine like an interview? The just hanging out yeah. with them oh. would be a so fun. Check this move out, right? So, you know, on South Park, I don't know if you know this episode specifically, but they 
Hartman like has this like loves Casa Bonita. It's like this big Mexican restaurant that's like amazing and it's got all this entertainment <laughs> as like cliff divers and they have like all these very specific it sounded like real specific it's a real place apparently oh really and so there's a real casa bonita yeah it's a real casa bonita and it like went out of business because it's just like it's it was all entertainment the food wasn't really great you know and it was like but it was all part of the childhood of a i guess uh the the south park uh, creators oh. and so they have this like kinship to it and so they decided that it, I guess through the pandemic or whatever, it just got obliterated. You know, that was like the, the end of them. And so they had the opportunity to talk to the owner to acquire it. And now I guess they could have just demolished it, started over and rebuilt it for a fraction of the cost. But they were like, no, no, we want to just like refurbish improve it. it, refurbish it. And they're like, this is going to be expensive. They're like, no, this is going to be astronomical. <laughs> you know how much they're in already? How much? For refurbishing this place? Huh. 40 million. Wow. What? Look, can we look it up? Can we see pictures? I want to yes. go there. Yeah. Where is it at? So they have real cliff divers that like perform and they do extra stuff. So, so they wanted Bro, to redo 40 it. 40 million? What is that? Like a Disneyland? Yeah. It's basically, it's like an amusement uh, it's park gotta almost. Be, it's so. got to be pretty big to be 40 it's million. It's big. And so they're, they're, they're doing a soft launch right now where they're like, uh, they're sending what? emails for people to come check it out. But it's like... <laughs> It, it, they're they're literally like this. This would bankrupt us if we just stopped doing what we're doing now. So we have to keep working, you know. <laughs> well, so you know wow. what I like about this? It's like a bunch of rich dudes who are like, eh, if we just break even, I I'm love happy. that. I love that. So bro. do I. That's what you know. I, yeah, that's I, why, I thought it was so cool. That's, that's why, why we're gonna open a gym one day. That's a hey, Robin yeah. Big was one of my favorite shows because of that. Because like the, like the, just the way they spent money. It's like I remember being Dude. a kid being like, this is like how I'd like. One day money. we're all gonna open a gym yeah. with the same mentality, and we're gonna be like, if oh, it yeah. breaks even, that's all I care about. And it's like everybody loved it. It's got fun memories is in colorado so oh that's it right there yeah oh that's hilarious but, oh uh, wow yeah so they redid all that that's where all the cliff uh divers uh, do their thing and so they put up shows on every like i don't know 15 minutes or something you know what it reminds me of you guys ever been to rainforest cafe in yeah. vegas uh, anywhere yeah, the yeah. Vegas has yeah, one. Yeah, they're so <laughs> terrible. <laughs> the food sucks. Yeah. But they got like, you know, rain. Entertaining things yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, so they improved. Colorado's they new not the place food. I would think for good Mexican food, though. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why it failed. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why. So they actually brought in like a different chef and they, they, because there's distinctive memories, I guess, some of the dishes, but they weren't very good. So they made those actually really good now. Uh, okay. But like the same kind of stuff. They, they, they haven't launched. You said soft launch is coming? It, yeah, they're, they're doing like um, just some people they're emailing in the area to come. Uh, you we know. should be able to get on a list like that. I would I, love I would love to go check it, it out. Send an email. Send an email. Yeah, Andrew. tell me you want to go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me what's <laughs> up. <laughs> Casa Bonita. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Mexican food of Colorado. You, uh, I'll take the bologna burrito. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, not the it was best even worse when I was yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Dude. Was, oh, my God. Mexican food there. Yikes. I'll have the, I'll have the Everything else chalupa. was amazing. Mexican food, no. Yeah, I'd say Taco Bell when they make up Mexican you food. Ever, do you have family or friends like when you go to like other states or other cities that you know is just like not known for that food and they're like, and they want to take you to like the and restaurant. And they promote it. Yeah, like, yeah. This is the best This one is here. such good sushi. I'm like, uh, there's not an ocean for like fucking <laughs> yeah. a long way. We're Where if Montana. I want sushi yeah, in yeah, the yeah, desert. Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Unless it's coming on a private jet the same day, bro. It's not probably that great of sushi. Yeah, yeah dude. That's so disgusting. <laughs> Yikes. Anyway. So I, there was a uh, a study on uh, on fitness and epigenetics I wanted to tell you guys about. It was a cool study because <clears throat> we've, uh, we've speculated uh, now for a while that exercise obviously affects the body. You, you adapt to it, but it also changes how your genes behave. This is known as epigenetics. So you have genes, but your genetics can express themselves differently depending on the environment. And we've long speculated that exercise will do this. Well, now we have a study on twins where they'll have identical twins. One of them's active. The other one isn't. And indeed exercise induces epigenetic changes that are protective against things like metabolic disease, cool. uh, type 2 di or uh, diabetes. So does, so does that mean it's like absolutely changing your your profile? It changes how your, like your DNA genes is express themselves. That's yes. got to be the ultimate ideal test group, right? Like yes, to always. To be able to have identical That's the gold twins. standard. Because yeah. this, this also goes back to what I asked you a while back when um, you had Aurelius, and we were talking about how muscular he was, and of yeah. course your wife is very muscular, so you know she got some of his genes. But then I said, do you think there's a difference of you 
compared to 20 year old you yeah. who had your first two, like, because you've changed, you've yeah. built so much muscle. Like we know that there's change. Yeah, that happening information on. has to be right. passed on. You, and, I mean, and, and, and an example and that is we talk all the time or, about how once you build all this muscle up, even when you lose it, you get it right back because there's obviously a code that's been written there. There's obviously a communication. I mean, it's, it's plausible. I mean, I'd been working out since I was 14, yeah. so I'm sure I had epigenetic changes then too, but not to the level. Are there yet, epigenetic no. changes that occur over time that are more profound? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does it influence how your sperm, uh, the type of DNA your sperm has and how it expresses itself? We know that women, when they're pregnant, what they eat in their environment changes how genes are expressed in the in the womb. So, I mean, it could be. Wouldn't it that be weird be. if your personality is just literally the culmination of like like a couple hundred generations of people that you've just acquired the next version, the next version, I mean, the next it, version, and it just becomes, you know, more uh, vibrant. Yeah, at that like, why am I so scared why am I, yeah. of, of swimming? You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. you're yeah. great. Where did I get that right fear? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Drown, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you have four people that drown your last uh, oh, yikes wow. down the tree there. Oh, wow. I know. I know. It's kind of weird. Anyway, another thing too here that's more health related. Um, I have a list of the, cause, um, this is now starting to make a rounds a little bit. Do you guys remember a while ago when that study came out that showed that, uh, vegan protein powders were the worst when it came to heavy metal contamination? Yeah. Do you guys remember that? It was like I remember deal. we called Organifi. Yeah. That I remember like, yeah. I remember you got the study right away and we were, this was like early on when we first were just starting mm -hmm. to sign partners. We were all excited cause we thought, well, we got this great new partner. And Organifi was that partner, and and that article came out shortly after, and you're like, fuck, like yeah. what? We, we cannot partner with this company if they're on there. And I remember you, yeah, we got on the phone the next day. No, they them. test for all that, so they're very clean. Mm -hmm. But here's the worst ones that uh, tested uh, on these tests, and and a lot of these are the most popular brands you'll see at like Whole Foods, Garden of Life, yeah, oh, that's a huge Nature's one. Best, Quest, Three Sixty Cut, oh shit, and, Quest was and on Vega, there? yeah, Vega. Quest uh, chocolate milkshake protein powder, and then uh, Vega or Vega. Uh -huh. Those are the worst ones. Those Vega, very, Quest, very and Garden are like three of the very biggest. Popular. Huge. Wow. Now, how crappy is that? Like you're taking a protein powder and you're you're building toxic levels of yeah. uh, heavy metals. Wow. Holy shit. That's terrible. Wow. Yeah. That's awful. But Organifi tests for all that stuff, and they're they're excellent. They have third party testing. You can you can. Their their vegan protein powders legit. They test uh, also for. Glyphosate residue, way way more stuff than that they're required to test for, to test for. So take us back yeah. out of health and back into speculating. Since yeah. we're this is like a speculating episode. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, well, I, you, we went hard there. For I minute. know. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna. Well, maybe not so hard, but I'm gonna take us back in that direction because it just reminded me of something that I was thinking about the other day that I thought was interesting, and I would love to hear you guys kind of speculate on it. So, you know, I, it's become obviously widely known that you know, Instagram and these, these social platforms where you post pictures and stuff of yourself is like this, the ultimate highlight reel. It's not real. It's yeah. like, this mm -hmm. is like everybody's best what picture. You want, people to see you want what, self, right? Right. Right. And, and in fact, there's also this kind of like counter movement where people started posting like, you know, like them with no makeup on and looking shitty. And this, like this, the other, it's all it'll be at the see. end of the Still. carousel though. Right. Right. Big, right. And, and, and even you get some people that completely like, you know, bash people for like only sharing these highlight reels of their life. But then it got to me thinking is like, or like, okay, if just go back 20 years and you went over a friend's or a family member's house and you flipped through their photo album, would you not see their yeah. favorite pictures? Yeah. Same thing. How is that any different? Well, it's different because you, you, it's it's ten billion times more pictures now. And way, I mean, not necessarily. Some people only post like a you know handful of pictures on their social. Generally speaking, that's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. But it's the everyday people that like. But, but generally I mean, speaking, we have pictures of I mean, ourselves way more than. than okay, so that before. part is different. Yeah. Right. So normally, when you go through a photo album, it's like you and your family and everything like that. Yeah. It's, it's not a bunch of selfies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that'd be funny. Well, if, if you, you have a you, shitty picture, you throw it out. Like what's yeah, the point you, of showing you wouldn't, it? You wouldn't put it in a photo yeah, album. No. You wouldn't frame it. No. So when you walk through someone's house and you look at all the framed pictures and you look at all the photo albums, don't we do the same thing? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, we yeah, put yeah. all of our best looking it's photos, it's just the not, best when I was in Hawaii, when I did, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't. Yeah. So, I mean, we give it's, so it's much. It's the same thing. It's just not, it's now turbocharged times a million. That's all. So yeah. now 
you you find somebody, you meet somebody, you look at their Instagram or their social media, and you see a lot. Whereas before, you meet somebody, I it's think, not like you could yeah, access their album. The only problem I think is with people that uh, compare themselves to the people. like they're the ones like looking. Like, oh, I have to be like yeah. you're looking outside of yourself. Like if you're just showing like, hey, uh, you know, this is a good picture of when we did this, and this is a good yeah. picture of me in this, you know, outfit or whatever. Yeah, like, that's great. It's it's. Well, I don't know. Like I saw this, and so I have to try and do my best to look this way. Yeah, no, I see the like to Sal's point, and what you're kind of alluding to right now too is like it's been amplified. That's all right. It's totally been amplified. My point is like there's like a, a lot of people that that make content that's like shitting on these people that like that make highlight reels of their life or that post all these pictures um, that have just the good times. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's always those people that are like trying to promote the crying and the, you oh, know, the, yeah, the yeah, bad yeah. pictures. God, and that's that. the fake, the I know, fake thing is not authentic. Well, that, I, and I just think that it's funny because I was, again, I was just kind of thinking about, I was like, wait a second. Like, Anytime I've ever went to a family member's, what made me think about it was I was actually sharing one, like one of my phone, like my yeah. family came over for Max, and I'm sharing like the photo albums and I'm like, oh wait, these are like all the best pictures. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and of course they are. Like, oh no, I why would to shave my back. Yeah. Oh well, it's going up. Yeah. <laughs> why would I put that in a photo album unless it's something that I really liked or something we did that was really cool. And it's like, I gotta be authentic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's all like, so it's all stuff you want people to see about you. So even if it's, an unflattering picture. What you're trying to show people is that, look, I really don't care. I'm, I'm authentic. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's all that, but the fakest, I don't know why people still do this. I don't mean they're all, fa it's all fake. Right. But the fakest to me is the pictures of themselves crying or videos or, or like really vulnerable. Like what made you stop to, to pick up your phone and record yourself and then continue this very vulnerable, you know, thing like crying. I don't so know weird, if I could dude. do that. I, I couldn't. Know. Yeah. I don't know if, if I, I started crying right now, and one of you pulled out your phone, I would stop. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to. I'd be like, what are you doing? I also think it's a weird time to do it. Like, um, Or if I pull it out myself, like how weird. I remember oh, the, so the last like my face, vulnerable, <laughs> feel like I'm going to cry <laughs> feeling I had was when my, my dog died, when Max, when, when, when Mozzie died. Oh, better grab my phone. And and I actually <laughs> oh avoided God. social for like two days so because of that. Do. Right. Because yeah, it's like my first instinct is not like, oh, here's an opportunity to show the world that I'm sad. You know what I'm saying? How, too, how about I, I reflect I, on I the too, memories I still have? You I know? too am like, sad. You know, if anything, I confide in my friends. You guys knew the yeah. day of and stuff like yeah. that. Like, so I, you know, console with them and so that, but how weird is that to think that getting on your social platform to console to your audience? Like, that's just, oh, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, it's, yeah. I don't know. Weird thought though I had. I was just thinking that about it with the photos because <laughs> yeah. there's this like shaming people for putting up you know, these perfect pictures of them. And it's like, but wait, that's no different than what you do in your house with photos. And the, I think that's uh, a valid point. Yeah. yeah it's like, like, you're, not, just, you're literally not just going to take a literally, terrible picture of yourself. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. Everything we do today is not any different than stuff that we did hundreds right. of years it's ago. It's just amplified. It's just amplified. That's yeah, all. Yeah. Like, what's the story? Yeah, of, is it Narcissus? Is that his name? Narcissus, where he oh, looked yeah. in the, into, into the, into the he reflecting. fell into the uh Pull water or something. Yeah. yeah like, cause you look at his reflection so much, he just falls into it. Like mm -hmm. Drown. these are all stories that, uh, and, and, you know, uh, I guess uh, lessons that still apply today. It's just times a bazillion. Yeah. So uh, another off topic, not fitness related thing, but I, I think Justin said this off air. We were all having a conversation and then I've actually just recently seen a bunch of articles sent. And then I saw, I think Jerry or somebody sent over something this morning on the, uh, piling up of the car, the electric cars. In oh, China. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so weird. I thought I brought that up. If, yeah. You, if I understand this correctly, so if, so China was trying to show how competitive they were at Tesla, right? Because didn't they do something originally with Tesla? Then they had a big falling out, and then Tesla pulled themselves out, and then China has. I think they're just propping up. They're propping up their companies by. Yeah, and then they have, so they have another company yeah. like Neo and some other companies that are like competitive electric car competitors yeah. over there, and they were trying to show how competitive how they are they were and how many were being sold and so yeah they're just skewing their numbers by just buying them all and then putting them in these car lots and there's thousands of these cars just sitting there unused and just rotting away now yeah that's the like <laughs> pure waste like just <laughs> just to try and compete it's, hey do you know that that's yeah. like the housing market thing they did yeah. exactly okay so this is so funny now part of why i bring this up is because they're in the last decade there's been like especially the the you know pro-socialist people that prop china up as like look at china like economic done. powerhouse yeah and the like part of that you know, success you guys think is fake success. And there's an example right there. The ghost towns is another example of that. 
So this whole, this, this country that we've been propping up is like so economically successful in the last decade or so. I wonder, I, you have to ask a, yourself, if this is the stuff how, that how we that see yeah. and it is like so obvious, like yeah. how many other things is propped up just to put on a facade? You know, do you guys know that there's cases where uh, with our military, we do that where we buy oh, yeah. like certain Cold War era tanks or fighter, you know, like, like helicopters or whatever. And we don't stop making them because of the work that they provide yeah. in the local towns right. and the lobbies. So they just build them and then just park them. They just and park, them, them. And park them. Sometimes they cement them, them, right? Sometimes they fill them with cement. <laughs> it's so like, it's it's just, just, you're like, like dude, all this could be going to feed like kids and yeah. like, you know, no, we're just going to cement tanks. Yeah. yeah, we need more government. Cool. Yeah, no, it's uh, lower, lower testosterone levels. All yeah, like that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> anyway, we have a shout out. Uh, looks like someone wrote there. Who put that? Higher human? Oh, higher human. Yeah. So that's Brandon. He used to be Brandon PFS, but he's a really- Oh, he changed his handle. Awesome trainer that uh, we actually had him on our YouTube channel mm. for a minute to um, do golf some guy. golf uh, content uh, for you guys. And he he does stuff for MMA. And I know he trains one of the- Sugar. sugar yeah. yeah he sugar trains, Shane. One of the, one oh, of the wow. famous fighters. Hey, oh, real quick. Speaking of performance, you've been giving your son uh, the multivitamin on a daily basis. Yeah. The, the higher one. Yep. Have you, so when did you start and have you noticed anything? Oh man, I think Katrina, God, when did they first send over stuff for us to try? Almost, we probably a year and a half ago or so. And so consistently? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I actually tried it the other day for the first time. Like, man, my son likes these. This must be pretty good. So they're not Flintstones. They don't taste that. No, they're not sugar. They're, no, they're not no, sugary no. like but that. But he likes them. Yeah. I mean, and I think that maybe because we've been really good with that stuff that he, but he loves his, like, he's so quick to take his vitamins. Like we've never had a hard time with him taking them. And it's got, it's got enough flavor to it that it he likes it but it, it definitely does not have that like well, remember you, oh, flintstones good, you could eat, that is just like candy. flintstones you wanted yeah. to eat it you know yeah. like like a like a tic tac or another small candy like that those you gummy to bear it. versions they have now yeah. like yeah, yeah. It's, it's literal candy and they sprinkle in like some yeah, nutrients just a little bit in there i don't know yeah no so we've been consistent with it we've been consistently giving it to him for i don't know how long katrina started it as soon as we got as soon as they sent over the stuff and i think it was you who gave the green light on it as far as like it being a, a good multivitamin for children uh, he's been on it forever awesome yep look studies show if you start your day with fiber and protein your blood sugar levels are more stable throughout the day you tend to eat less you feel better and of course high protein builds muscle well there's a company called creatures of habit that makes a high-protein oatmeal real easy. Just add water or milk or almond milk, and you've got 30 grams of plant protein, digestive enzymes, vitamin D, probiotics, and some fiber and oatmeal to eat. It's phenomenal. It tastes good. It's inexpensive. Go check it out. Go to creaturesofhabit.com, spelled with a K. So creaturesofhabit, spelled with a K, dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code MP25 and get 25% off. All right, back to the show. First question is from Ibrahim201. From watching YouTube mind pump clips in Squat University, I realized a wider stance with toes pointed outwards substantially adds depth to my squat. How can I tell if I'm masking ankle or hip mobility issues or if it's just my anatomy? It's more likely that, that the reason why you can go deeper with a wide stance, toes pointed out, is because of ankle mobility. It's, it's, that's more common with something like that. So turning the feet out reduces the amount of um, elbow, uh, excuse me, um, ankle knee. mobility you need um, and turning the knees out, right? Getting a wider stance. Um, now, how would you know if it's your anatomy or not? It's First off, it's not that common where somebody has anatomy in their hip joint where they can't Especially fully. if it's like really exaggerated, yeah. right? Like maybe a, a slight, but the, the idea that someone's pelvis is going to have you, yeah. cause you to put your feet this wide out is... Uh, yeah, I think Not if likely. you feel if it feels like your bones are locked in and it doesn't move anymore, then that might be more of a joint anatomy issue. But you know, I know that people have been making this argument and showing different hip anatomy, mm -hmm. and um, I, I think it's a small percentage of people who have trouble squatting deep. I, actually, I, I don't think I'm pretty sure that that's the case. And what what's the the problem with that information is that I think it's putting a lot of people who could work on mobility. It's getting them to not work on mobility because yeah. now they're saying it's my anatomy. That's why I don't like right. that. Yeah. I mean, a, a, another very easy way to test this is, you know, elevate your, elevate, get like two 45 pound plates, put your heels on it, 
and then see if you could like sit your ass back on your calves. And if you can easily do that just by lifting the heels your ankle. way up, mm-hmm. like that, it's your ankle. It's your that's, ankle a, that's a great way. Like put a, get yeah. a more narrow stance, elevate your heels. Yeah. Narrow, now yeah, can you squat down? Forward toe yeah. position yeah. and see yeah. if you can still get depth. I, that's how I used to just destroy that argument with someone's like, oh, I have to because, you know, my morphology and, you know, try and I'm like, okay, then I get two plates. I'd take, make them do a narrow stance with their feet totally straight. And mm-hmm. I'd sit your butt on your calves and they'd sit all the way down. <laughs> no yeah. problem. Like, yeah. It's not it's, your hips. Yes, yeah, not your hips. Yeah. You you know, what's interesting about this is that squatting is a, uh, for most of human history, is a resting position. Yeah. It's a resting position. Uh, in other words, it's so, we're supposed to be able to do it so easily that you should be able to sit in it and rest. Comfortably, yeah. Like, just chill. Like, I could just, you know, sit here and chill forever. Um, but because we sit in chairs, we never do that. Obviously, we lose that ability. But that just goes to show you, like, we have the capability. We just don't have the strength and mobility to do so. So the goal should be work towards that. By the way, don't force yourself. Yeah. Uh, you, you should be able to do it with good, uh, you know, mobility, strength, and, and, you know, relative comfort in the sense that you're not like struggling. So don't force yourself just because we said you got to go low, but work towards it. I, so I, and I, there's nothing wrong. So this is while I was working on my ankle and hip mobility, uh, my squat stand, I had Uh, squat shoes and a little bit more of an open stance than I have today. But meanwhile, I was consistently Mm -hmm. addressing that and to the point now where I can barefoot, narrow stance, straightforward toes. And so um, there's, it's not like if you're squatting with your stance a little out that all of a sudden it's bad and you should stop doing that or stop squatting. It's like, no, keep squatting like that, but keep working on the ankle mobility, keep trying to address that. And you can make progress there. And then you'll know when you have, because you're going to be able to squat with your feet, probably straightforward. Yeah. I think it's really just, uh, addressing what the limitations are and, and realizing if there is a way for you to squat within a different stance and if you can work towards that direction you know you're not limited by your morphology and you realize it's an ankle mobility issue there should be work done in that direction it'll help benefit your overall movement patterns and and you know build a more resilient functional body next question is from mc fearson how does a supinated pronated and neutral grip change or affect an exercise wow okay uh depends on the really right uh when you're talking about the biceps the 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 way that you're you if you supinate so if you turn your palm up that's supinate or neutral where it's facing in or down where your palm's facing down that's pronate that all changes bicep activation in fact if you bend your arm and just turn your wrist you'll notice your bicep moving because it's involved in, in that function so when it comes to pulling movements like back exercises and definitely curling movements the, the, the pronating or the supinating or neutral just changes activation of the bicep. So you could use more bicep, more brachialis, more brachioradialis. These are all muscles that flex uh, the elbow. When it comes to pressing movements, the grip, whether your hands supinate or pronated, doesn't matter except for that it influences where your elbow goes. So if I'm bench pressing and I supinate my hands, well, it's going to force my elbows to come in more. I can't I, it's almost impossible for me to bench press with my elbows out and my hands supinated on straight bar. So that now starts to influence my elbows. And then elbow position influences whether or not I use more shoulder, more chest, more pec. Yeah, 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 all that stuff. So that's that's kind of, you know, I, I would say how it breaks down um, everything. It's like, how does it influence the muscles that ch- that turn the wrist, which is really just the biceps, or how does it? Where does it put your elbow? I, I think yeah. the most important one to to break down is to me is the the bicep and the tricep, and that pronating, supinating, very much so influences your bicep exercises. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really influence your tricep exercises. So you see these knucklehead dudes that will do like reverse grip skull crushers or reverse grip push downs or the rope, the triangle, the straight, and like all these different things that are changing the wrist position for triceps and your triceps are being activated the same. The exercise feels different because of how you have to have grip and one's more awkward than the other. So just because something feels a little different doesn't mean that it's, it's targeting or hitting that muscle different. But in regards to Sal's point, the uh, you know, bicep exercises are different. The back ones seem to be different too, but it's not because of the because of the pronating and the supinating of the wrist, but because of the position of the elbows and the elbows where they are at dictate like how we're targeting and hitting the back. Have you guys ever done a uh, supinated grip uh, bench press? Uh huh. Yeah. I have. Reverse yeah. grip. They call reverse it, right? grip. Right. Yeah. But that's uh, a that's a that's a front delt 
upper chest exercise. Totally different, yeah, pattern there. There's, I mean, one of the one of the like uh, best bench pressers was uh, Anthony Clark. Is mm-hmm. that who he is? Yeah, he passed I away. He was that uh, name. Jesus Christ. He was a uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> guy. Yeah. He's an almanac, dude. Yes, he yes. was. Uh, uh, I think one of the first people to bench press seven hundred pounds. Yeah, I remember he was. I remember that was a big deal when that happened because that he, you know, he was bench pressing with a reverse so much, grip, yeah. and there was controversy around it, like yeah. that he was doing that. By the way, I, I'll tell you the reason why we don't have reverse grip. Bench, it's an exercise, so it's got value. We don't put them in the programs because the risk of an extra of reverse it's, grip. It's a lot more risky. Uh, I mean, you'll lose if you lose the bar; it's on your face. Yeah. And I've I've done that before because yeah. you try to like unrack and like it's awkward, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a spotter when you do that. Um, well, but, and and not to mention uh, again by you pronating or supinating your wrist in there, so because we do have close grip bench press yeah. in our exercises, and that has the, you're not getting that much more of a different exercise or value by doing it. Uh, in no, a, it just changes the elbow. Yeah, hundred percent. But Same you can, the, I mean, you can still do a close grip. With yeah, your, you can with your wrist. Yeah, you know, in a in a pronated, or neutral. Pro, yeah, or neutral yeah. position, and so there's safer ways to get the same kind of exercise or the same value from that exercise. So there's a reason why we don't don't mess overhead with that. presses too. Uh, you know, if you get if you do an overhead press, there's some handles you can use that are neutral. Yeah, and you'll just notice it just brings the elbows in uh, close to your side. So there's I, I guess to put it plainly. There's more, there's too much emphasis being placed on supination and pronation on most exercises. Mm -hmm. There's very few exercises where it really makes a big difference. All the others, uh, oftentimes they're just trying to make a common exercise look different by changing, you know, the grip position. But for most I, exercises, it doesn't make. And I love that you you're wrapping this up on that because I mean this goes back to why we highlight like the big you know five movements and like yeah, hammering that right. home to everybody. It's like you could literally go the rest of your life and only do those big five and nothing else and build the most incredible physique. And yet there's all kinds of you know controversy and TikTok videos and Instagram of all these custom cool exercises where you are doing weird angles and and pronating and supinating your wrists in ways to target a certain area and it's just like for 99.9 percent of the population like it's so irrelevant we're just creatures that respond to novelty yeah Yeah, it's just it we're always looking for novelty and we want to think that it's like oh that was the missing thing that's why my delts weren't building or oh that's why my chest isn't bigger it's like i I wasn't doing a a reverse supinated grip pinch press like that's it's like you know what you want to know what's funny this just reminds me kind of uh, connected. I remember years ago, a uh, bodybuilder buddy of mine told me, man, you feel your biceps more when you bend your wrist back and you do curls. Remember people uh, saying yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So instead of holding the bar with a straight wrist, bend them back with like in this broken wrist and yeah. you feel it more in your biceps. And I remember I did it. I was like, I feel more of a squeeze. Like what's going on now? Thankfully as a kid, I was very analytical. So I thought about it, like, what's it doing? What's happening to the muscle? And then I realized something. All I'm doing with when I move my wrist back with a barbell is here, it's easier to support because I'm opposing gravity differently. Here, I'm now the weight is a little heavier yeah, the because it's down lower. <laughs> yeah, it's just down lower and yeah, the leverage yeah, has changed. Leverage. So that's why I feel it more in my bicep. Right, I remember right. thinking like, oh. Uh, well, also, it, it, it's, <laughs> also <laughs> it's also resting on the joint versus you having yeah. to actually <laughs> activate your forearm to not neutralize it. Yeah. So you get less. Such a bad version. <laughs> yes. Not a healthy thing. And it's not going to make the difference of your bicep size. No, you no. know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, just a classic example of like things that don't yeah. matter. Next question is from Macy Nelson. 7890. I am someone who isn't able to connect to their glute muscles very well when I squat. So would it be better to go lighter on the movement and work on mind to muscle connection or just continue to go heavy? Will I still see gains if I drop the weight? It depends. Uh, if you want to just lift heavy, you just go heavy. By the way, it, uh, a lot depends too on how bad your connection is. But if you just want to squat more weight, I mean, you could just focus on going heavier so long as your form is pretty good. If you want to develop your glutes more, then you're better off doing the mind to muscle connection. Now, I, I, now there's what's interesting about this argument or about this question is there's an argument that's made that says if you have trouble connecting to a muscle, add enough weight and that muscle is going to activate. That there was there was that argument used to exist in the fitness uh-huh. space, and I could see uh, I could see there's some truth in that, but when it comes to developing aesthetics. Uh, okay, fine. I'm activating my glutes more because I added so much weight, but I'm still going to develop my quads faster and I'm still going to have this imbalanced look. So if it's aesthetics, uh, then I would go with mind to muscle connection. If it's just weight, 
then I would, you know, like want to lift weight, then I would go weight, unless the connection's so bad that bi biomechanics suck, in which case you're better off connecting. That'll make you stronger. Well, well. Here's, a, here's a classic. I mean, there's always mm -hmm. exceptions to the rule, right? I just got done saying about the big five and how important yeah. the big five are. You can just do those for the rest of your life, build this great physique, okay? And then I get a client like this that comes across me. Like, here's an example of where I, I might drop the squat and put a bunch of emphasis on the hip thrust. Yeah. You know, and we yeah. made that argument the other day about the whole thing that came out with Brett Contreras that, okay, we know that squatting is officially better, you know, even though we knew that before, but we're, it's official now because there's a study, of course, that proves it, that squatting is better for building your glutes. But if you have a hard time feeling in your butt and connecting to it and seeing the results of your butt growing from that, you're a client that I would put a, a lot of emphasis on the hip thrust. Yeah. And we would mm -hmm. maybe rarely squat. We would squat just to go back and measure, like, are we getting better connection? Are you starting to feel that? Because we've trained the hip thrust now, and I've got you really strong in the hip thrust, and you're starting to work on that mind-muscle connection to the glutes. Now can I take it over to the squat. And so I would use the squat as like a test now. It'd be like, okay, we're going to do a lot of hip thrusts. We're going to do a lot of things like lunges and step ups and Bulgarian split squats and other, other movements. And then I'm going to revisit the squat to test like, Hey, are you starting to feel it more in your glutes? If not, let's keep, keep loading and pushing that hip thrust until I get to that place to where we can use both movements. Great advice. Next question is from 7MR46. In a recent episode, you guys mentioned avoiding processed foods as in anything in a wrapper or package. Does this mean that while eating a whole food diet, we would need to avoid cheese? God forbid, right, Justin? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Not, yeah. Black it's crazy? Yeah, no, no, it's heavily processed <laughs> food. It, that's a general statement, like anything that's packaged. Um, I mean, technically everything's processed. It goes through a, a processing plant. Your meat comes in a package too. What we're referring to are foods with lots of different ingredients with these really long shelf lives. So right. cheese, how many ingredients in cheese? One. Uh, meat, one. You know, you could buy certain things that have like two or three ingredients, but it, it's mm -hmm. things that are engineered and put together with lots of different ingredients uh, where they're designed to become hyper palatable. So those are referred to as ultra processed foods is what we're you know you, you know where this comes from, and this comes from the community that, that promotes all the... Yeah. Everything's a molecule. Everything's yes. a chemical. Yes. Every, everything's a chemical. Everything's a molecule. So then it becomes like, you know, everything is processed. Even your meat, you know, is your yeah. is is processed. And again, just trying to confuse the audience. And the idea is that you know, your goal should be to eat as close to whole foods and all natural as you possibly can. And what does that mean? As little processing as possible goes into it mm -hmm. and as little ingredients goes into it as you possibly can. Does that not mean that all of us at one point of the day have some sort of a processed food or things like that? Yeah. I just don't want to make the bulk of my diet around those types of foods. If it gets introduced, I don't think I don't, I'm not trying to fear monger people make them think they're going to die because they have processed foods. It's that it will better serve you if you build your majority of your nutrition plan around whole natural foods and even whole natural foods yeah. have a little bit of process. There's natural in limiters in there too for satiety and all kinds of yeah. other things. And so it's like, if you're, you're specifically talking about cheese, like, like let's talk about like uh, cans of cheese, right? Where they have like all oh, spray preservatives, cheese? spray Very cheese, different. right? Yeah. Easy cheese uh, versus like even American cheese to me, it just feels like it's plastic, you know, just... And, and that's the thing. There's there's a, a lot more ingredients added to kind of great uh, example. You could look at a, a American cheese like Kraft or whatever. Look at the ingredients. That is heavily processed. Heavily cheese. processed. Or you could buy a block of cheddar. Very very just different. salt and in milk. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because cheese. If you can have dairy, by the way, cheese is. I mean, it's actually a very nutrient dense. Uh, food. It's actually, it has been around for thousands of years. People have eaten it for a long time, yep. but they're not all created equal. I'm so sad, glad you said that because I thought of that. And I, you know, you look at the back of the, the, you know, the craft sliced cheese, which is, is like plastic Ch yeah. or like Velveeta. It's like a paragraph long of just uh, yeah. listing all these ingredients yeah. and, or and like binders. A, what were those little snacks that you get the stick with the cheese and you spread it on the cracker? Oh like, that's yeah. Not cheese. That's Handy not snack. Cheese. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to eat the hell out of those. That's not cheese. <laughs> it's not good. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness and health guides. You can download any or all of them and they cost nothing. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.